and we're live. Start the screen. Yeah. So start sharing your screen. Barbara. Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to English Language Proficiency Speed Run. This is the first class for IELTS. I'm really glad to see you all have joined the class. So the structure here will be at first, um, I will introduce myself, you, and then each of you will introduce yourself. So I will give you, all of you a different question, and each question will be from the IELTS speaking part, right? So it will be like a warm-up exercise, and for also for me to know which level you all are at, so I can proceed accordingly. And then we'll go into an overview of what IELTS is, what each section is, and then we'll cover the speaking part one part. So our main aim for today is to cover speaking part one. Okay, so first I would like to introduce myself. So I'm Mehin Reza, I'm your IELTS course instructor. My IELTS score was an 8.5 and today we'll be doing speaking. My speaking score was um, an 8.5 also. So I'll start by answering one question, a, ra a random question that I have chosen for all of us today. So the first question is, do you like pets? Yes, I do like pets. I myself have a cat. She's a domestic cat called Bubblegum and I've had her for five months. So when I ask you a question, like I'll ask you to say your name, you'll say my name is this, and then you'll answer the question with one example or with one reason, right? don't give one word answer so that's a good practice for speaking to so let's start with um babur right so the question i would like to ask you today is what is your name and what's your favorite weather are you there just uh unmute your microphone and answer Okay, so Barbara is not sure. Um, Rufaida, are you here? Yes. Okay, so what I would like to ask you is, what's your favorite type of music? Just give one sentence answer with one example. My favorite type of music is uh, recently, now it's K-pop, um, and my favorite band is BTS. Okay, thank you. And now I would okay. like, um, Arik, are you here? Yes, I am. Okay, so what's your favorite TV show? Uh, currently, my favorite TV show is House MD. I've okay. recently started enjoying it really much, and it's all started from a Facebook video, and I just got hooked, and I'm, I'm like now binging it, although I shouldn't be. <laughs> okay, that's a great answer. I also love House MD. That's a great answer because you gave us an example um, you told, uh, you gave us some details and explanations. So that's a great way to give a long extended answer to your short question, okay? So Anna, next slide. So this is the first section of what we'll, we will be doing today, the overview of IELTS. Next slide. Okay. So what actually is IELTS? IELTS is the International English Language Testing System. It's an English proficiency exam that will test your four skills in IELTS, reading skills, writing skills, speaking skills, and listening skills, as well as your ability to apply them practically. So what we'll be covering in this course is the academic section of the IELTS. IELTS actually has two sections, two types of IELTS. One is academic and one is general. Academic is for people who are going abroad to study, maybe in a university. And general is for those looking to migrate. So we'll be covering the academic IELTS. There are also two types of IELTS. One is paper-based and one is computer-based. Paper-based IELTS, in paper-based IELTS, the reading, writing, and listening sections uh, have to be answered on paper, while in computer-based IELTS, you have to type out your answers. Speaking will be the same for both. You'll have to speak face-to-face -face with an examiner. Okay, next slide. So the highest score you can achieve in IELTS is a nine. The lowest score is zero. But the only way you'll get a zero is if you don't attend your exam at all, right? So you can also get fractional scores. You can get 8.5, 7.5, 6.5. So a great 
a band nine scorer is would be referred to as an expert user. They have a complete command in the English language. They're accurate, accurate, appropriate, highly flexible, and fluent with their full understanding. So they're by accurate, it means they make very few mistakes in terms of grammar, in terms of sentence structure. But this doesn't mean they don't make any mistakes at all. You can still get a band nine score if you make a very few mistakes. You don't have to be completely perfect. You just have to be mostly accurate. And it, you have to show that you fully understand the question and can give um, good comprehensive answers and correct answers to each question. So a band eight would be a very good user. You have complete command of the English language, but um, with rare errors and inappropriate words. So you deal with complex language flows. Different between grade eight and nine is um, band eight makes a, a little more um, mistakes than band nine and they might use inappropriate words, like words that don't fit the context or don't fit the topic they're talking about. So, but still you could get a band eight, even if you make some mistakes. Uh, so grade so band seven is a good user. They do have a good command of the English language, but they sometimes have inaccuracies some misunderstandings, some inappropriate words, but these are still um, very occasional errors. By complex language and understanding detailed argumentation, they mean complex language is basically a language that has a variety of vocabulary. So you're using different types of words, you're using different types of sentence structures. So the more vocabulary you have, the better um, accuracy, the better grammar you have, the better you're going to score. The band score actually depends from in different parts, like speaking is assessed differently, writing is assessed differently. So when we deal with each section, like when we're dealing with speaking, I will break down the band score and the marking criteria for speaking differently. Like I will tell you exactly what is assessed and what you need to do to get a good score. Um, next slide. Okay, so this is just a short overview of what the speaking test is going to like be like, right? So the IELTS speaking is a face-to-face -face informal discussion with an IELTS examiner, and it's the same for both academic and general training. So it has three parts, and it's designed to test your pronunciation, fluency, grammar, and vocabulary. So the IELTS speaking tests four parts. It tests um, fluency and coherence, vocabulary, grammatical range and accuracy, and pronunciation. These are the four things tested by your speaking exam. Your speaking exam will be over, like in total is going to be at most 11 to 14 minutes. It's not that long, so you don't have to worry about it. So if you're talking a little bit about the procedure, the procedure for any IELTS exam is at first, you're going to sit in a waiting room. They're going to call your name. They're going to take a photo of you and then you'll enter a room with your examiner. The examiner will start click on the recorder and then your exam will start. Your exam will be recorded and then um, it will be assessed by a panel of judges. Judges. Sorry. So the, the test is meant to be as interactive and as close to a real life situation as it can get. So the purpose of IELTS is to see if you can speak English properly, right? If you can speak English fluently, if you can read, write, and listen to English fluently. So because the end goal is for you to be able to apply this in a real life situation, like talking to classmates, talking to your teacher, listening to your teacher, which is why it's mm, we want you to speak directly to an examiner. Okay, next slide. Overview of listening. The listening test, it assesses a range of listening skills and it uses a lot of accents and dialects. So I've seen a lot of people thinking that it's only going to be about British and American accents. No, that's not the case. You don't have to worry about accent, about your own accent. And in the listening, you listen, listen test, listen to some recordings, right? This recording is going to be in using various accents. So you might have someone with um, a European accent, um, someone with a Irish accent. It really depends, but it's going to be a wide range of accents, but they will all speak clearly and fluently. So you will be able to grasp what they're saying. So the IELTS listening has four recordings and each record and for each recording, you'll have 10 questions. The first two recordings will be related to social needs. The second two will be related to educational or training content. So it might be a recording of a university lecture. The 
whole test, like all recordings together, is about 30 minutes to complete. And each section gets uh, difficult over time. Next, it's mm, next slide. So the next part of IELTS is the reading section. So the reading section has 40 questions in total, and it um, tests a wide range of skills. So this could test if you can read a paragraph and realize what the main idea is. It can um, test if you're good at identifying synonyms, if you can identify what the writer's opinion, you can identify the mood or the attitude of a text. So this is three long passages and it's basically comprehension from each passage. You might, you'll get very short answer questions. You could also get MCQ. It will be a mix of MCQ and short answer questions. And these, will, these passages will be taken from real books, journals, magazines, and newspapers. There have been, don't worry if you get something maybe related to biology, it doesn't matter. The subject matter itself does not matter. The Eng, you, it's going to test if you are able to understand the English the main idea of the text itself. Um, after this, it's about writing. So next slide. Um, so the writing test um, will assess your writing skills, how well you can express yourself through your words, through writing. So um, this has two tests, and they will all assess how you organize your ideas, how you use a range of vocab and grammar. And the whole test will be 60 minutes. Like both tests together will be 60 minutes. So in task one, you'll be given some sort of um, graph, table, chart, or diagram. So you might be given, let's say, a graph of how GDP increases over time, something like that. And you'll, you'll be asked to describe the um, diagram given. So um, all you have to do is, you, if it's a graph, you talk about where it increased, where it decreased. And we'll discuss this in depth during our classes. This is just an overview. So task two will be in. Um, an essay to, in response to a point of view, argument of or problem, you might be asked to say like, is our book, um, is it better to read um, books or is it better to read eBooks, like physical books or eBooks? So then you have to discuss both sides and give your own opinion. It's going to be a bit of an argumentative writing. Um, it could also be um, discussion-based writing, but it just has to be one short essay. So, and the, your writing has to be formal. Okay, next slide. Mm, Anna, next slide. So we're done with the overview. So I would like to tell you next what I expect from the class. Right? Um, I expect you all to be in the Google Classroom because I will be sharing resources there. I have a lot of articles about how to improve in your English. I have some video clips and short stories as well as practice materials that will help you become familiar with English content. So I will tell you which ones are optional. So most of the short stories I share are going to be optional. But if you feel like you need um, to read more English stories to understand English better, then you can read them. They'll also be interesting, but it won't be mandatory. But I will be give, giving some homework, which will be mandatory. I will send you my email address. So if you feel like you need more help, so maybe you're practicing speaking, you record a speech and you need feedback on it. So you can just send me your recording and I'll give you feedback on that. So also do try to keep a pen and paper with you. Um, I The slides will have a lot of information, but a lot of information would also come from me. So I'll be directly talking to you about um, examples and um, a lot of details that will not be in the slides. So do try to take notes. You can um, take it on your computer. You can use one note or notion to take it on your computer. You can do it on a piece of pen and paper. And if you want, you can take screenshot of the slides, but don't just do that, also take notes. So here there are some examples of content I'm gonna share, two videos. One, the one on the right is a TED talk. So it's, it's an example of where a person just talks about a topic in English. And the one on the right, sorry, the one on the left would be mandatory. Like it's uh, is a video on 50 words you might be pronouncing word, pronouncing wrong. So that will help you improve your pronunciation. Next slide. Okay, so we'll dive right into IELTS speaking now. Our overview part is done. I will tell you the test structure. I'll tell, give you some tips. I'll break down the band score for you, and then we'll dive right into part one. 
Okay, next, next slide. Okay. So this is how IELTS speaking is divided. It has three parts. The first part is a question answer part. The second part is the speech part. The third part is a continuation of the second part, but it's going to be a question answer based part. So the part one is about you. The examiner will ask you familiar everyday questions about your life. We will see a lot of examples on this. We will see a lot of common topics that may come. This will last around four to five minutes. The examiner will introduce themselves and ask general questions on topics such as home, family, work, studies, and interests. Part two is you have to give a short speech by yourself. So you'll be given a task card on a particular topic. Uh, it will be a card. On the card, there will be some points written down. So you have to talk, give a short speech on those points. So it maybe it could be about um, art. So you talk about, you have many different points like art, about art galleries, about what kind of art is popular now. Basic common topics, you don't have to worry about it. It's topics that are going to be um, known by the general um, <laughs> audience. So you will get one minute to prepare your speech and you'll speak about it for two minutes. Don't worry about this too much right now. I will discuss part two and part three in our next class. We'll have lots of examples, lots of practice. While it might seem a little confusing right now, over time it's going to seem a lot easier as you become an ex expert in these topics. In part three is, the, is a bit of a continuation on part two. So it's going to give um, further questions and a little critical on thinking questions related to part two. So if part two is about art, part three is going to ask you questions like, do you feel like people appreciate art a little less now? Do you feel like um, how people view art has changed over time? So a little more critical thinking um, questions that will ask you about your own opinion. So the examiner will try to see if you can articulate or like bring together your thoughts um, in impromptu conversations, right? So next slide. Okay, so this is the speaking marking criteria. It's this slide here is really small. Don't worry about it. In the next slide, I will break down each part of the band descriptor. So now you're going to have to take notes. So um, I'm gonna go to the next slide. Next answer. So the first part, the first thing you, so the four ways you will be assessed in speaking, the four criteria under which you'll be assessed are fluency and coherence, lexical resource, grammatical range and accuracy, and pronunciation. Each of these categories um, holds 25% of the marks. So if you get um, eight in fluency and coherence, eight in lexical resource, seven in grammatical range and accuracy, seven in pronunciation, they're going to add all the scores in each under each category divided by four and that's going to be your speaking um score so if you get eight in two of the categories and seven in two of the categories they're going to add that up eight plus eight plus seven plus seven divided by four so your overall score will be 7.5 so starting with fluency and coherence fluency refers to your ability to speak smoothly and at a natural and appropriate speed without any unnatural pauses what does it mean by speaking smoothly without any unnatural pauses? So an unnatural pause occurs when you say, or um, you hesitate a lot, or maybe you're saying something and you, then you just stop. You just, and then you think again, and then you stop, and then you think again, and you speak again. So that, that if you pause a lot when you speak, if you hesitate a lot, then you're not fluent and you'll get a lower part in this book lower mark in this part. Coherence means being logical and consistent. It refers to how you expand and explain your answers with details and examples, answer the question being asked, and how you connect sentences together using transition words. I'll break this down a little. So by logical and consistent, it means you start speaking about something, you go halfway through a sentence, and then you seem to forget or you seem to confuse and you start another sentence again. So that that has no coherence so coherence you might know this word for science it means sticking together it means um flowing or going in one smooth um series right 
So if you start saying something and then your sentence is incomplete, you don't finish the sentence and then you go to a new sentence, you won't be coherent. So to be more coherent, to make your sentences longer, to explain yourself better, you could use details, you could use examples. There are many ways you can extend your answer. And um, you have to answer, uh, answer the question being asked. So you, you have to show them you understand the question. So if they ask you about art, about visual art, paintings, and you start talking about music, that will show that you don't have an understanding of the English language or you're confused about the question. You don't understand what the question meant. And another part of coherence is how you connect sentences together. So these were transition words include words like however. So if I'm talking about something, so I say, I, um, I really like Indian cuisine. However, I believe that um, European cuisine is also enjoyable. So I'm talking about one idea and then I'm talking about a new idea. So my, I'm transitioning from those two ideas using the word however. There are many other words like this you could say additionally, along with that, moreover, furthermore. There are many transition words that you can use and this actually depends on what you're talking about, right? So if you're adding ideas, so you would say additionally. So you're saying one point and you say additionally this. So, for for example, you could say that um, um, I can sp I'm very fluent in English. Along with that, or additionally, I I can also fluently speak Bangla and Hindi. So you're adding ideas. So how would you improve your fluency? So to improve your fluency, it would it's important to try to think in English and avoid translating answer from your native language. So if you're thinking in your native language and translating to English, it could be that you would sound unnatural or you pause a lot. So when you're translating, you translate the first few words, you stop in your head, you translate the next few words, you say those words, you stop. So you're going to have a lot of unnatural pauses if you keep translating from your native language. So in this case, it's best for you to try to think in English this will happen with practice. So every time you're practicing in front of the mirror, if you're when you're trying to um, record yourself or you, when you're doing practice, you should definitely um, try to think first in English and then uh, speak in English. So you should speak at appropriate speed, pause when needed. Don't try to speak too fast. Um, if you speak too fast, it could be that um, your words slur together and the examiner is not being able to understand what you're trying to say. You have to lis listen to things in English, read things in English, watch things in English. This will help if, because usually um, in speeches, in stories, in TV shows and movies, they tend to speak um, in continuous full sentences. So if, if you're habituated with listening to uh, people speak fluently, over time, you'll also get used to speaking fluently yourself. This, there's, actually, there's also um, something very important with fluency. You need to be confident in yourself. So while um, your tone, your mood, or um, how, how cheerful you are, how positive you are, doesn't matter um, to the examiner, it should will matter to you because the more confident and the more positive you are, the um, more fluent you will be. So if you're nervous, you'll end up hesitating a lot, you'll end up stuttering a lot. If you're confident, if you believe in yourself that, yes, I have practiced, I know how I'm going to be marked, I will do well, then hopefully you will be able to speak flu fluently and coherently. Okay, so it also, this might happen that you can't think of a word or you're searching for the right word in your mind. For in this case, just there's no need. Just use a synonym. Use a phrase. To you don't have to, just because you can't remember a difficult vocab doesn't mean that you're going to take time and pause in the middle of a sentence to think about that word and remember that word. That will disrupt your fluency. Just speak continuously. Don't pause. If you can't think of certain words, say a different word say a different phrase, use a different example. That's completely fine. 
just ki to speaking fluently you just need to relax and enjoy speaking english the more you enjoy speaking english the better you're going to be able to speak right so you need to connect your sentences using linking words like however you need to extend your answers adding all relevant details so to extend your answers you can give examples you can give reasons like you you can say um I like visiting this place. Why do I like visiting this place? Then you can give ex reasons for which you like doing that. So you can say that I like fresh air. So mm, you can use examples, you can use reasons, you can um, talk about the past. You can say that currently I like, I enjoy doing this, but in the past I used to enjoy doing this. So the problem with one word answers is the examiner does not cannot assess you based on your one word answer. The examiner needs to know if you're able to speak in full sentences. So the more you extend your answer, the more the examiner will think, oh, this person can speak fluently. They can use long sentences in English without hesitating. So you're gonna get more marks that way, right? So you need to speak smoothly, continuously. You need to add relevant details to your answers and you need to use um, pauses correctly. So don't pause in the middle of each, um, in the middle of words. You can, um, there are natural ways to pause, like pause at the end of a sentence, pause when you're listing something. So when you're making a list, you um, pause after, uh, pause a little bit after every word. And so we learned this when we first started learning English, commas means short pauses, full stop mean a little long pauses. Okay, going to the next part. Um, which is lexical resource. So lexical resource basically means a vo vocabulary bank, bank. How many words do you know? So the first thing I will say about vocabulary bank is that do not memorize words. If you memorize words, you will not be able to use them in the proper context, right? So if you know a big word and you know the meaning of the word, that doesn't mean you'll be able to use it properly in a sentence. So if you want to build your vocabulary, I think the best way to go is by seeing them in context, by reading books, learning words by reading books, learning words by watching movies, by listening to TED Talks or watching other people speak. Whatever it is, if you learn just a big chunk of words, you might be using them incorrectly. So you might think one thing means something, but in reality, it might mean something else. And also, it's not just about knowing difficult words, right? So lexical resource is not just about words. It's also about knowing certain phrases, knowing certain um, stylistic devices. So you could use idioms metaphors, similar similes. So one example of something you can use is raining cats and dogs. This is something I did do in my speaking test. Raining cats and dogs means it's raining very heavily. So that's one example of an idiom that you can use. Another that you might be able to use is um, quick as a fox or I will send you a list of um, the idioms, a list of transition, I'll be sending you a list of transition words, a list of you know, idioms and metaphors. So you can incorporate that into your writing, not just a list, but I'll be sending you them used in a sentence. So you'll get an idea of what context to use them in. Okay, so that is it about lexical resource. I'll let, wait, let me check if there's something so for lexical resource, you need to use a wide range of vocabulary. So, so that you need to know different words that are appropriate for different situations so that you don't keep repeating yourself. Like what if, what if I want to say something is good? I can't keep using the word good too many times. I can say it's great. I can say it's fantastic. I can say it's um, like if I'm talking about an experience, I can say it was a positive experience, something like that. So like the word scared. Instead of saying I was scared, I can say um, I was terrified, I was afraid. There meant, or I can use an idiom and I can say it gave me goosebumps. So it gave me goosebumps is like when you're really scared, you feel like the, um, the hair on your um, arms are rising up. So that is an idiom for feeling scared. So that is also a good use of your lexical resource, right? So, the way to practice this is to read or 
watch videos on a variety of different topics using appropriate words. Oh, and you should speak formally or semi-formally. Do not use informal words or informal idioms. Make sure they're formal. So for this, you can um, use resources that usually use formal language, like news articles. You'll see that their language is almost always formal or semi-formal. Okay, moving on to the next part, which is grammatical range and accuracy. Um, from this refers to your ability to avoid making grammar mistakes. You should also have a wide enough range of grammar to be able to talk about a range of things and use complex sentences. You will therefore need to be used tenses correctly. You also need to be aware of different types of functional language, such as how to give your opinion and compare ideas. Breaking this down. So grammar, there are so many parts of grammar. There are um, adverbs, verbs. So adverbs are um, words that describe a verb. So you could say, it made me very happy. So very would be an adverb here as it is describing another word, so this is happy. So adverbs describe words that are not nouns. So aside from that, you can say it was, done, it was um, done beautifully. So she can paint beautifully. That would also be an adverb. So other parts of grammar that you should be able to use well is tense. So tense is past tense, present tense, future tense, past participle. So you must make sure that you're not mixing up your tenses. So if you start talking in the present tense, you should continue in the present tense, unless there's um, any reason that you need to shift to a different tense. Like if you now you want to talk about what you want to do in the future, then you can shift to the future tense. But are you talking about the past event? You can shift to the past tense. But if you start speaking about a certain topic in the present tense, unless you have a reason to shift to a different tense, or Mm, do not shift to different tense. So you start talking about, I really like Indian cuisine. Um, and, mm, this is uh, some s mm, dishes that I really like are tandoori chicken, I like dals, something like that. You continue with one tense. But if you start with a different tense, like um, I have always liked Indian cuisine, you have to con continue using that tense. So then, then in the next sentence you you have to say I've always I have always enjoyed dishes such as and continue using that tense. Aside from tenses, there are also um, sentence structure. So there are some, several types of sentences, but three main sentence types that you need to know are simple sentence, complex sentence, and compound sentences. Simple sentences are sentences that just say one idea, one complete idea. So this could be, I like fruits. So this is one sentence. It's a simple sentence. Compound sentences is when you take two ideas, two different complete sentences and you join them together, right? It could be, um, I will, uh, example. So it could be something like, um, she did not like to read as she was not very good at it. She did not like to read because she wasn't very good at it. So in compound sentences, you take two full sentences and you join them together. So um, the word, there are some words you can use to join compound sentences together. These, there are actually um, seven words that you can use. So the, these are called transition words. You can use for, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. So if I, for example, if I use but, I can say, um, I really dislike spicy food, but I will make an, ex an exception for some soup, something like that. Sorry, soup is not a spicy food, but you get my idea. So you take two full sentences. So the first sentence was, I do not like spicy food. The next sentence was, I make an exception for soup. They're both full sentences, but I'm joining them together using the word, but. And yeah. An another example of a compound sentence would be with so. It was raining outside, so I took my umbrella. I took my umbrella as one sentence. I It was raining outside as one sentence, but I'm joining them together. So another question can arise, like if 
um, if I, they are two separate sentences, then why do I have to join them together? Can't I just say them separately? Yes, you can. But the reason we're joining them together is so that we have a mixture of different sentence structures. So if you have the same sentence structure throughout um, your your speech or throughout your writing, you'll often see that it becomes boring, it's become monotonous. So if you vary, vary the sentence structure, if you have many different sentences together, you have a mix of simple sentence uh, and compound sentences, you will see that mm, your speech becomes more interesting. So another example of a sentence is a complex sentence. So a complex sentence has one full sentence and one one full idea and one incomplete idea. So an example of this could be, although he was wealthy, he was still unhappy. So although he was healthy is an incomplete sentence because um, although he was healthy, okay, what next? Oh, he was wealthy, so what? So to change, to end that sentence, we can go with, although he was wealthy, he was still unhappy. This is a complex sentence. He was still unhappy is one complete idea. Although he was wealthy is an incomplete idea. So you combine them together, you get a complex sentence. Another example of a complex sentence is she returned the computer after she noticed it was damaged. So after she noticed it was damaged is an incomplete idea. She returned the computer is a complete sentence, it's a complete idea. So we call these independent and dependent clauses. I didn't really use this word, I didn't want to confuse you, but dependent clauses clause is um, after she noticed it was damaged, it is dependent because it can it's an incomplete idea on its own. But when you add another um, part to it, like she returned the computer after she noticed it was damaged, it becomes a complete sentence as it makes um, full sense. It's a full thought. Okay, so that's an example of um, different sentence structures. And um, if you use different sentence structures, if you use um, tense correctly, if you um, use a different variety of vocab, you're going to get um, good grades in grammatical range and accuracy. So you should, to increase your score for this part, you should avoid grammatical mistakes. You should try to use more advanced grammatical structures, such as using different types of sentences, um, different tenses, etc. Okay, so the next part is something people often struggle with, pronunciation. Right? So pronunciation will assess how well you use different pronunciation features, such as individual sounds, stress, and intonation. Communicate in a natural way that can be easily heard and understood. Your accent does not matter, but your speed, intonation, and pitch does. Be sure to stress the correct syllables in words and stress the correct words in sentences. Okay, let's break down this part. Your accent does not matter. It never did. It doesn't matter if you speak with a British accent or with an Indian accent. Your accent is a part of who you are. It's part of um, where you're from. So if I have an Indian accent, it's because I am from this subcontinent and I don't want to need to change my accent for IELTS. I just need to speak clearly and I need to pronounce the words right. Okay, so... Um, there are there are many different parts to pronunciation. Of course, you have to know how each word is pronounced. We already know that for many words, but sometimes some words can be confusing, such as the word pronunciation itself. It, you you would think it's 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 pronounced as pronunciation, but it's not. It's pronunciation. I will send you a video about um, how different words are pronounce because if I go through each and every word right now, it would take a lot of time. So there are some common words like Ahman. Ahman is the nut. So you we might end up saying this as almond, but even though it's spelled as almond, it's not pronounced like that. It's pronounced as Ahman. Okay. So how could you improve your pronunciation? So, so one part of pronunciation that's mentioned here is intonation is the way your um, voice naturally falls up, goes loud, then goes soft again. This comes naturally, so you don't have to worry about that very much, but I would only worry about intonation if you are memorizing large chunks of words. So if you were memorizing what to say, if you were, if you like took a list of every IELTS question that has ever been asked and you memorize the sample answers to them, when you said say your answers, you're going to sound very robotic. So 
and you won't sound natural. You won't have a prop proper rise and fall of your voice. So do not try to memorize answers. Try just have some ideas in your head. Do look at some samples, but don't memorize it. Try to make your own version of it. Try to use your own words, your own tone, whichever you're comfortable with. Okay. So next, I would like to discuss stress. So stress is the intensity or strength that we give specific syllables or to specific words. Some words are given, said with more intensity, others are said with less intensity. Some are some syllables are made a little long, others are said a little short. So for example, if you say um, in the word banana, the first syllable ba is short, but the next two syllables are stressed, they're long, so banana. And then you have words like um, decrease. So the first part, D, is short, then crease. The second part is stressed. So um, for a lot of us, this stress comes naturally. But you can, of course, look at um, videos of people talking, shows and movies to get better at this. On about questions, after I'm done discussing the um, this part discussing the breakdown of the band score. I will give you some time to ask questions before I directly start talking about part one, right? So it's I, another example of a stressed um, syllable is weaker. So when you say the word weaker, like the opposite of the word stronger, the first part weak is made stressed and the second part er is said a little, in a little short way, so weaker. This also happens in certain words in sentences. So, for example, if I'm saying, are you hungry? I'm saying the last word, hungry, the, it's an important word. It's a functional word of, of the sentence, the main word of the sentence. I'm focusing on it. I'm making it a little lengthy. Um, let this come to you naturally. So, are you hungry? If I'm saying, I'm, I'm waiting here for two hours. If I say it like this, then I will stress the words waiting and two hours as those are the main focus of that sentence okay so we did discuss stress there are some one other part that like to discuss okay um so pronunciation is a very important aspect of spoken english so you need to decide which sounds you have problem with and pay close attention to sounds that you should produce so maybe you have a, your you saw a word and you're confused about how you should pronounce it. In that case, you can always use online dictionaries. So often if you just Google the word, Google will give you um, a part where you can listen to the audio of that word. So you listen to the word in the online dictionary and then you repeat, um, you say it to yourself and you repeat saying it as much as many times as you need until you feel like you have been able to say it properly. Mm, yeah. That's about it. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so if anyone has any questions here, I will take um, questions for questions if you have it. So you can unmute yourself and say it, and you can also um, say it in the private chat. Yeah, I would, uh, if you feel like you have some difficulty understanding me, then do tell me that, okay, um, do say it in this chat that Apple, I didn't understand you right now. Could you say it in Bangla? Then I would explain that part in Bangla. But the reason I keep talking in English is because you guys need experience with listening to English, experience with understanding words in English. But if you, like, now is the question answer time. If you feel like you need to ex need to explain something in Bangla, then I will definitely explain it to you in Bangla. But I will not be teaching my classes fully in Bangla as um, you need that experience with English. But if you have difficulty hearing us, hearing me, or difficulty understanding me, do ask me to repeat any part in Bangla or in a mix of Bangla and English. If... So does anyone have any questions? Okay. I will try to use a little Bangla though, if you feel like you would be more comfortable with that. Achha. Um So now we're going to start with speaking part one. I will tell you what the test is structured like. 
So part one is about you. The examiner will ask you fam familiar video questions about your life. It's going to be 45 minutes. They will, the examiner will first introduce themselves and ask general questions on familiar topics such as home, family, work, studies, and interests. So the questions I started this class with. Um, I asked about um, favorite TV shows, I asked about music, I asked about pets. All, those three questions are all from sample part one IELTS questions. So they will ask you questions about you so you can talk about yourself, your personal interests. So I will tell you an ex, um, a sample part one question with some sample answers right now. Okay, mm, one minute. Okay. So I'll, give, I'll tell you one question and I'll give you two versions of the answer. So the question is, what was your favorite book or story when you were a child? So you can answer this in two ways. The first answer could be Wizard of Oz. As a child, Wizard of Oz was my favorite storybook. And another way you could answer this is as a child, the first book I remember I remember enjoying was Wizard of Oz, written by American novelist L. Frank Baum. It's a story about a girl named Dorothy and her adventurous journey. It's a classic story for children. So the two answers. The second answer is more comprehensive. It's an extended answer. The longer your answers are, the more fluency, coherence, and lexical resource you can show. So if you give short answers, the examiner might think that you're giving short answers because you don't really know English or you don't know the words you need to make a longer answer. So the sa it's safe if you, it's good for you if you extend your answers with examples, with um, explanations. For example, here in the second part, they said, my, the first book I remember enjoying was Wizard of Oz, written by American novelist L. Frank Baum. It's a story about a girl named Dorothy and her adventurous journey. It's a classic story for children. So the speaker here gives lots of details. So they say it's a classic story for children. It's a story about a girl named Dorothy. And the, he gives the name of the author. So if you extend your answers, you'll be able to show more coherence. So. It it na je lomba lomba answer dite hi hobe short answer dite paro but lomba answer dile it better. It examples are repeat corners. Aga jeta bolso uta abar bolar door karne. But do do give examples, do give details, do give explanations if if you feel like it's appropriate. The second question, the follow up question to this would be, do you like reading? The first type of answer might be. Yes, I like reading a lot, especially a newspaper. It's a short answer. It's OK. You can answer like this. But a better answer would be, yes, I like reading a lot, especially a newspaper. By reading newspapers, I can know what's happening around the world. It keeps me updated with co my country's economic and political situations. It's a good source of knowledge as well as entertainment. So the second answer is better because um, the speaker says, gives a lot of uh, examples. It gives a lot of reasons why they like newspaper. Like it helps them know what's happening around the world. It keeps them updated with the country's economic and political situation. That's a good source of knowledge as well as entertainment. So if you give long answers with a lot of was an example. So now I'll give you some general tips about part one. Speak as much as you can. Do not give one word answers, but do not repeat yourself um, either. To extend your answers, you can add opinions, examples, reasons, etc. So if the question is, do you like your job? Don't just say yes. You can say, yes, I really like my job as it allows me to connect with people across the globe. I enjoy learning about different cultures. It depends on what your job is, but um, both say that, yes, I do like my job, but both say can Like it allows me to connect with people across the globe. I enjoy learning about different cultures. Your answer should be very organized. So if you need time to think and structure your answer, but don't want long, awkward pauses, then you can use comments or fillers that will give you time to think. So often these questions you will ask courage if, oh, do you like your job? What do you like to do in the evenings? I need some time. I'm going to So 
if you feel like you need just a little time to think, but you don't want to be silent, because if you're silent, like don't you put the examiner monoko but to me English Janona, like to me Janona ki bolta we should know. But I should take to put the time like so you know you can use filler words. You can say, that's a very interesting question. There are two main things, or there are two main reasons, something like that. You can say, Oh, that's a very difficult question. So while you're saying those words, that's a very difficult question. It gives you some time to think and organize your thoughts and then structure your next sentence. Okay, um, next slide. Okay, another tip. This is specific to part one, by the way. So be fluent. This is something already discussed about fluency. So try to think in English, speak without hesitations or unnecessary pauses. Use contractions if needed. So you can use contractions if you want. Like this is not recommended in the writing section, but in the speaking section, if you feel like that will make you sound more natural, you can use contraction. That doesn't mean you can use words like gonna, wanna, not that. You can use words like I can't, I don't, I won't, I shouldn't, something like that. Using contractions if needed. Practice speaking in English at length and record yourself. So English speaking requ requires a lot of practice. Um, act a friend or shut the phone at call her the parum. Um, yeah, on to my IELTS classmate, shut it to me. Practice court the paro online quick the sample question. Yeah, I'm gonna write you a question you wish for and then you listen to your answer. Huh. Um, is on to answer your question? Yes, definitely. You can say that you can say, Oh, that's a very interesting question. Let me think. And then don't think for very long, at most one to two segments. Don't just stand there or don't just sit there completely silent. Mm, part one question answers are very short. You don't really need a long preparation time for it. In part two, you have to give a speech, so they will give you one whole minute to prepare for it. But in part one, it's you don't have to give a speech. You just have to say, um, give one example or give one or two short sentences. So don't take very long to think, just um, I take one or two seconds at most. And don't say it too often. Don't, um, don't go like, oh, can I take a moment to think for every question? Take it for one or two questions at most. And you will need to do this more in a part three because part three has harder questions. So I would suggest not doing that too much in part one. Um, the next tip is pronounce your words clearly. Work on rhythm, stress, intonation, and pitch. Um, intonation and pitch will come naturally. Pitch is um, how high pitch you sound, how low pitch you sound. So if you sound deeper, you're low pitch. You don't have to worry about that. But you need to know about stress. Intonation and pitch comes if you're not, if you don't memorize um, sentences. If you memorize sentences, you will sound un unnatural. You'll have no intonation. Like your voice won't rise and fall naturally and you'll have um the same pitch so just don't memorize so to for your for good rhythm intonation and pitch don't memorize speak naturally for stress um you have to stress certain important words you don't have to focus on it too much but yes do remember that not all syllables are supposed to be at the same length let your voice right rise and fall and speak in a natural tone so you don't sound robotic you need to be easily heard and understood. So speak at an appropriate loudness with confidence. So if you're too quiet, the speaker won't be able to listen to you. The examiner won't be able to listen to you. So talk at a loud enough voice that the examiner can hear you. Use online audio dictionaries and videos to know the pronunciation of words you're confused about. I will send you some videos, but if you have any a particular word that you want to know the uh, pronunciation to right now, then you, sh you should definitely use or online audio dictionaries and just you can just google the word or like um the say the word then write meaning so for example you can say fluency meaning and then in google you will see a small speaker like icon you click on that icon and it will um, pronounce the word for you okay so as for clarification and correct your mistakes you can ask the examiner to repeat the question if you had difficulty hearing it but don't do it for every question. It's okay to make a few minor errors. Feel free to ap apologize and correct yourself instantly. So the first part of this, which is asking for um, clarification. You can say, um, you can say, I didn't really get that. Could you repeat? Like if 
mm, their talking was muffled or you you couldn't really hear what they said. They were a little too quiet. You can say, I couldn't get that. Could you repeat? Don't say this too many times. Just um, at the beginning, if you tell them that you can't hear them, they will uh, be louder for the next few questions. So just politely say, I couldn't hear that. Would you please repeat that question and they will repeat it for you. And you about correcting your mistakes. Maybe you accidentally pronounced a word wrong. You were saying something and then we'll take you. um not the word word also. But pronounce so that's fine. Act out the book or it's completely fine. Just say sorry. Then just say it again. Say we were take our below. Sorry, our below. So don't do it too many times. Like the more you practice, the less mistakes you'll make. But exam hole ja hoy to nervous lage. We boy you know. Um, so don't worry about it at all. You can um, correct yourself instantly. So okay, feel okay. So practice in speaking. Practice is really important. You need to improve fluency and coherence, and for that you need to practice English speaking. You need to train yourself to think in English and speak regularly if you want to minimize your hesitation and speak with a good flow. So. If you don't have practice speaking in English, you might hesitate a lot. Um, you might take a lot of breaks. So for that, um, the best thing to do is to practice. Practice with a friend. Practice in front of the mirror. Record yourself. Listen to yourself. And then see how many pauses you're making. How many mistakes you're making. And then just practice again. And see if you improve. So if you maybe you start start recording yourself today. You take any topic you like and you speak about it for a few seconds and you record yourself. And then you do the same thing every day of the week. And the next week, you listen to um, the recording from seven days ago and then listening to the recording from one day ago and see if there was any improvement at all. Like if speaking and listening to your recording did any change to the way you speak, to your fluency. Okay. So you um, next slide. So, um, okay. Common topics in part one. So part one is all about you. It's going to be very personal questions, like not personal, but like it's about you. So you don't have to worry about it too much. It's very simple questions. So some common topics include work. So. For academic IELTS, they often don't ask about work because we are all students, but I will still discuss answers to questions about work. You could, If they ask you about work, you can just say you're a student. Then they'll ask you about your study, like what you're studying right now. I, um, Today we have very few people. I was actually planning on doing like half of the class on lecturing, half of the class on practice. So we do have very few people today, so I don't think we're going to be able to do that. But um, we'll try that anyways. Okay, so hometown. They might ask you where you're from. They might ask you to talk about your village. So then you have to give them examples about your village, what your village is like, what you miss about your village. They will ask you questions about that. You say, where is your hometown? You just say, my hometown is this. Um, it's located, you can say, east of Dhaka, whatever you want. Or you could just say, my hometown is this. You could ask about your home. So one question I came across during my mocks was about accommodation. So accommodation means the kind of place you live in. So you will talk about your apartment. You will talk about the rooms in your apartment. You can talk about, you can say that, oh, I really like my apartment because it is a big balcony. So your accommodation would be like if you don't live in an apartment, if you live in a house, then you'll talk about the house, something like that. Art. It could be about painting. They could ask about your favorite type of art. You could ask about art galleries, like what kind of art galleries you like. Birthdays, they could ask what you like to do on your birthday. It, they could ask um, how you celebrate your birthdays. Childhood, clothes, daily routine, computers. They, they could say, for computers, they'll ask stuff like, do you use your computer a lot? What do you use it for? They could ask about what you use the internet for. Dictionaries, family, friends, evenings, flowers, food, 
going out, hobbies, holidays, happiness, internet, leisure time, music, entertainment, neighborhood, newspaper, pets, reading or books, shopping, sports or fitness, TV or cinema, transport, weather or season. So the first question I'd ask was about the weather, but the person I'd asked wasn't there. So if you if you were asked about whether you would say, oh, my favorite, you could say my favorite is um, windy weather or when it's rainy or when it's very sunny, whichever you prefer. Okay. Does anyone have any questions about what we have covered so far or any questions from this particular slide? Yeah, you can, um, to answer Ehsan's previous question, you can use it to think for an answer, but in part one, you don't really need it. So I will show you a lot of examples. In part one, you don't really need to think about an answer too much, okay? And Ehsan, even though your microphone is not working, I will still expect you to participate in the practice part so you can type out your answers. I won't be able to um, mark your fluency or coherence, but I will definitely mark your grammar and your lexical resource. Okay, so if no one has any questions, next slide. Okay, so this is an example question, part one question with sample answers. So at first you will see the examiner. The examiner might want to see your identification card. So that would be your passport for most of us. So you would just show them your passport and then they will start. They will click on the recording button. There will be a small black recorder. You'll see a microphone next to it and then they'll start recording. So they might start with this question. What is your job? So this is a pretty big answer. It's fine if you keep it a little smaller than this, but for the sake of it, let's read this one. I currently work as an office manager at a large marketing company. I've been in the job for about five years now. I'm usually assigned to work with a specific business in order to improve their sales through various marketing strategies. I've been working on the job for five years now. So he gave some detail in form of time. So he didn't just, he could have just ended at the first sentence, but he extended his answer to show his coherence and fluency more, to show that he can speak in lengthy sentences in English. So he, one example he gave, or one a detail he gave was about the time, about five years now. Another detail he gave, like, I'm usually assigned to work with a specific business. So he talked about what work he does, what he's usually assigned. Next question, do you have to work with other people? The answer, oh yes, all the time. It's a big office and we all have to work as a team if you want to achieve results. I have colleagues I need to collaborate with such as the graphic designer. So such as the graphic designer was an example here. And I also have admissions, administration staff who I supervise. Along with that, along with that is a transition word here. It also shows coherence and it shows um, also shows some lexical resource since it's a um, commonly used phrase. I also have to work alongside the companies that we provide marketing for. So yes, I definitely have to work with other people. So this um, answer right here, it has very good grammar. It's very, it's nicely organized. It has a, it, it, has a constitution so it says so yes i definitely have to work with other people so it starts by saying yes i do work with other people it gives some um details some examples some reasons and then it's a, it then he concludes with just one sentence so yes i definitely have to work with other people and do you think uh, you will change jobs in the future so Usually at this point, like this, this is, might be a little difficult question, so you might need some time to think about it. You can say, well, that's an interesting question. Well, that's not something I'm thinking about at the moment as I really enjoy what I do. And it's a good company to work for. The pay is great and they have other benefits such as flexible timing and end of year bonuses. So he said such as, then he gave two examples. But that said, change is always a good thing. So I can't see myself working there forever. 
I'm sure I will change jobs one day. So um, he used quite a few sentences. He explained, he didn't just say, um, oh, I will change jobs one day. He gave reasons, he gave examples. He showed how he thinks. And then he said, yes, I will change jobs one day. So the next part is all about practice, right? So any of you can use your microphone. Rufaida, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Okay. So I'll, the next question will be for you. Um, next slide. So I'll ask you each of these questions separately, and you will answer um, by your by yourself. Just give your own answers. It's fine. So first question: What are you studying at the moment? Well, I'm studying in college second year at Idaho School and College. As um, uh, as the lockdown is going on, I don't know when the HSC our HSC exam will happen. So I'm currently uh, waiting for the decision of the government when will, they will take the HSC exam and when our admissions will happen. Okay, so this was a good um, answer. It was pretty long, but. And at the end, you seemed a little confused, right? So you kept repeating words like um, HSC, and it was it became a little irrelevant. It's, you can you could have ended the at like um, I study at this idle school and college, and I'm waiting for my HSC exams to take place. That's it. Don't worry about it. You don't have to make it too long. So second okay. question: What do you like most about your studies? Is it for me? Yeah, all of these questions are for you. Well, um, I like, um, I need a moment to think actually. I'm a bit nervous right now. That's fine. It's, it's just practice, so don't worry about it. But in the real exam, don't take too much time to think. As I'm an English version student, I like uh, that I have to, uh, all the subjects I read are in English. So it is better that I'm uh, able to be fluent in uh, another language except my, except Bangla. And um, my favorite subject uh, is mainly chemistry and English, as I'm good in these two subjects mostly. Sorry, I'm a bit. <laughs> That's completely <laughs> fine. Don't worry about it. So you spoke a lot. That's completely fine. You you can get nervous. You, with practice, you will get better. So you could have uh, talked about your. You could have started off like, um, I what I like. I like the subjects. And then I think you said chemistry. I like these subjects, and then you say the subject, and you said, and then you give one reason. First sentence will be subjects you like. The second season will be the reason. Second sentence will be the reason you like those subjects. Okay. So last question. Like I will ask you a few more questions. We have very few people and have lots of questions prepared. But that's good for you. You get more practice done. So you get to improve more. Okay. So next question for you. What do you hope to do in the future when you have finished? Well, uh, I'm currently currently uh, trying to apply in medical college. So I hope I get into a public medical university of our country so I can be a good doctor in the future and serve my country well. Okay, that was an excellent answer. So your first two answers, you were a little confused, but the last answer, you were very confident. So compared to your first two answers, that was a really good answer, right? Because now you... Um, talked about yourself you said you want to serve your country so that's great you gave a great um, um and Isan, just because you don't have your mic right now doesn't mean you're not going to have to answer questions i will give you questions i will expect you to give very prompt answers to them <laughs> okay so Rufada, you did great your third answer was really good you um, you could use a little more of vocabulary you could break down your sense and sense a little more. So one thing I've noticed is you use the word and a lot. So maybe try to change that with um, some words that mean the same thing. Like you could say along with that, 
or you could say furthermore moreover additionally i will send you a list of synonyms so today look, i will send transition words today so you can definitely look at the list okay so <laughs> okay harik are you there yes i'm here Okay, great. So the next question is going to be for you. Next slide. Mm, okay, before that, I would like to show some sample answers to refer this question. So, um, it's previous slide. Okay. So, the first question was What are you studying at the moment? Rufaita talked about how she was studying in Ideal College. And she's waiting for her history. I'm not sorry. She was waiting for her HSC. That's a perfectly fine answer. Um, you, if you're a university student, or if you're you're studying a specific subject, or maybe you could say I'm a science student, or you could say I'm a humanities student. So, if you're asked what are you studying at the moment, one sample answer could be, I'm studying history at university. It's a four-year course, and I started it three years ago, so I just have just one year left. I'm enjoying it a lot, so it will be sad to finish. You could just say I'm studying history at university and have one year left. So you should have two to three sentences, but it's completely fine if you get, if you feel nervous and you get stuck. So if you feel nervous and get stuck, just say one sentence or like two sentences and you can end there and then wait for the next question. Just let yourself feel, you know, become comfortable with the exam situation. Okay, what do you like most about your studies? Rufaida talked about how she likes um, the fact that they're in English. She talked about how she likes um, certain subjects. She could, she could have also talked about why she likes those subjects. So an example here is we've learned about many things from the past, such as politics and wars. But I like learning about how people lived in the past the most. It's amazing to see how our lives have changed so drastically from the past up until now. In some ways, our lives have got much easier now, but in other ways, the simplicity of life in the past made people much happier. Learning about all that is fascinating. So there are two things you'll notice. Um, I would like to point out about this answer is that um, the speaker, they used contrasting ideas. So the first they say, we learned about many things from the past, such as politics and wars, but I like learning about how people lived in the past the most. So at the first, um, he said, um, I I was struck this, but he used the transition words to sh compare or to sh contrast. And then he said, I like this. Another way he used it, in some ways our lives have got much easier now, but, which is an opposing idea, a uh, different idea from the one he just said, but in other ways, the simplicity of life in the past had made people much happier. So even though our lives are much easier now, in the past, it might have been better because of the simplicity. And then another thing I would like to point out about this answer is the fact that he gave his opinion. He gave his own feelings and emotions. So learning about all that is fascinating. So using your saying, um, how giving your opinion or saying how you feel about something is also a good way to extend your answer. So if what do you like most about your studies, you can say what you like. So he, at first he said he's studying history, then he said what he likes about history, contrasting it with what he learns and what he likes. And then he talks about how he feels about it, his opinion about it. Okay, so the third question was, what do you hope to do in the future when you have finished? So Father's answer to this was pretty good. She talked about how she wants to serve the people of her country. So. This answer, uh, answer, the sample answer here is, I'm not sure at the moment, but I may go into teaching. This is why I'm doing the IELTS, as I intend to carry on and do a master's in a specific area of history. I'll probably decide for sure what to do when I have completed that. So, speaker both said, this is why I'm doing the IELTS. You don't have to mention the IELTS. And I'll just take the example, but I'll mention what the hobby now. the answer was perfectly fine. Or both say, okay, what the child? Like it just portion of she the gym, like what profession she wants, and she even said why she wants to do that. She wants to serve her country. That was a very nice organized answer. Just um transition words could improve what the part Yeah, and what the barber now you school. Okay. So Arik, are you still here? Arik? Yes. Okay, great. Um Anna, next slide. 
Okay, so all right. These questions are for you. What do you like to do in your free time? It is a complex question because I honestly cannot remember the last time I had something called free time. But whenever I do get a break, I enjoy watching movies, reading books, and most importantly, playing my guitar. All right. uh, that was Should good. I move on you, to the next question? Uh, yeah, yeah. There was a good answer. You gave a list of things you like to do. You also gave your your opinion on the question. So you said, oh, I don't really get much free time. That's fine. You can give your personal feelings on it. Um, and about starting with, that's a complex question. You can definitely start with that way if you need time to think, but don't use it for every question because the examiner will then understand that you're just using it to buy yourself some time. Okay, so next question. Have your leisure activities changed since you were a child? Leisure activities are what you do in your free time. So has that changed since you were a child? Yes, definitely. It has changed from time to time. For example, I used to play a lot more sports when I was a kid, but now it has moved on to uh, basically using technology for my free time, like binge, binge watching movies and shows on Netflix and maybe uh, browsing the, so, uh, on social media. So yes, I would say my uh, leisure activities have changed since I was a child. Okay. That was a great way to answer your question you gave lots of examples you said how it changed so you answered the question it shows that you understood the question very well because you talked about mm, what you did in the past and now what you do and you even gave a reason for why you think it has changed because of technology so that's good you also concluded mm, by summarizing what you said so this is what this is why i think yes leisure activities have changed so yeah that was a good way to do it but you also have a similar problem and you also use and a lot. Don't make your sentences too long. Maybe use and once in a sentence, then go to the next sentence. Aki sentence and ba irukum words akbare beshi use korbana. Unless you're making a list or something like that. But bar bar use korna, just you can use simple sentences, that's fine. Okay. Um next question for you. Do you prefer to spend your free time alone or with other people? It depends on the company, but most of the time I do prefer spending my time alone, with my hobbies and my and my basic my shows. Okay, that's fair. So you could give a little more examples here. So if I personally, your the, your favorite answer that I liked most was your answer to the second question because you explained that pretty well. It showed that you understood the question pretty well. So you could, I feel like you could still work on your third question, your answer to the third question. So um, give a little more examples, use a more variety of vocabulary, and make the length was fine, but you could also start, start it in a different way. Um, you'll understand it better when you when I show you the sample answer. So next slide. Okay, so what no for question first question I asked him was what do you like to do in, in your free time? So he gave a lot of good answers. He gave a list. He said he likes to play the guitar and many other things. So an example here is I do quite a lot of sport actually. I play football mostly on Wednesday nights and Saturday afternoon with a local team. So I kind of to extend their answer. This person um give gave some examples of time like when they play football i also play tennis and squash when i can but i don't really get the time to do them as well every week so this person also listed so they also talked about many different activities but they um said them separately this gave more details i work quite hard at the moment so i don't get a lot of free time unfortunately it's similar to how ari gave his answer he said he doesn't really get free time but here, you could, um, this answer you says is at the end, and it also use shows better vocabulary because they use the word unfortunately. So it doesn't just state that they don't get free time; they also comment on it using an adverb unfortunately. Okay, 
So the next question, have your leisure activities changed since you were a child? So Ari's answer to this was pretty good. He talked about technology. So let's look at this answer. Not a great deal, actually. I used to love playing football when I was young as well. I played a lot at school. Though, of course, I did all the other things kids love to do, such as going out on bike rides after school and things. So this answer isn't as well developed. Our answer gave a good reason. It said what he did in the past, what he does now. He did use the word and a lot. So I would say the sentence structure and grammar here is actually much better. But I would say the content of Eric's um, answer was better than this. Do you prefer to spend your free time alone or with other people? So let's look at this sample answer. It depends on my mood, really, which is similar to something Eric said. Eric said it depends on the company. I think most people need some time on their own. Sometimes my work is quite stressful and I spend a lot of time there with others. So it's good to just get home and relax and read a book or something. But I get bored if I'm alone too much, so I like to go out and meet friends in the evening or play football. So this person explored both sides of the question. So he said he didn't give us a concrete answer. Then no, I like to spend my free time alone more. He explored both sides. He said, depends on my mood, um, I think most people do need some time on my on their own. So he gave some reason, like my work is quite stressful. So I spend a lot of time there with others. So sometimes he feels, he or she feels good to get home and relax and read a book. So they said um, how they spend their free time alone and why they enjoy it. But he explored the other side of the question. But it, I get bored if I'm alone too much. So I like to go out and meet friends in the evening or play football. So these are examples of what he does when he's with, he or she is with other people and also why, like they get bored if they're alone. Okay, so um, next slide. So is, okay, is Nafisa Nawal here? Okay, no problem. So I guess we'll just have to go with Rufaida and Arik. Um, Esan, I will give you some questions in the ch in chat box, right? So Rufaida and Arik. Rufaida, let's start with you. So do you like to travel by train? Uh, yes, of course, I like to travel by train a lot as my hometown is in Chiragong. So I have to go there by train most of the times. So yeah, train journey is very enjoyable for me. Okay, that's good. You gave yes. You talked about why you travel by train, but that's actually an answer to the second question rather than the first. So when you say do you, when they ask question like do you like to do this or do you do this, you you can say yes, and then you can give an example of why you like it. Okay. Next question: Where do you usually go by train? My hometown is in Chiragong, so I usually go to Chiragong by train. Um, we we uh, mainly, mostly uh, we take the night train. Uh, I don't know how to make this answer long, like, but should I say more? Uh, that's completely fine. So you could... Um, you could talk about what train journeys are like. Where do you go? That's completely fine. You could say why you go by train instead of any other year. So, but don't worry about it. I'll show you a sample answer. When was the last time you traveled by train? We connect to details to well, Let me know what the journey was like too. And um, don't worry so much about extending your answers. The answer length is fine. One to two sentences is fine. Uh, the last time I remember, uh, maybe in 2000, uh, 19 as the as uh now pandemic is going on i cannot really travel by train right now so it was a very enjoyable enjoyable journey for me and the last time i went to my hometown after that i couldn't go there and it was uh, mainly uh, as i remember we took uh, a night train and i slept all through the ride and it was pretty much fun Thank you. oh okay that's that's fine you're really nervous that's completely fine so next slide let's look at the sample answer okay 
Do you like to travel by train? Okay, let me assess um, your reading skills now too. So when you read, you also improve fluency. So Rufada, why don't you read out these answers for us? Okay. Yes, I quite like them. If you are on a train, you can relax and look out the window, read, use your laptop. It's all quite comfortable. On the bus, it's more difficult to do those things because there is less space and the movement can make you travel sick to. Sick to. The only problem with trains in my country is that they are often delayed or late that can ruin your journey. Where oh, do you yeah. usually go by... Oh, should I read the next one? Yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead. It's fine. Where do you usually go by train? It's usually on long trips across the country if I want to visit the friends or I have an appointment somewhere. For short journeys around where I live or to work, it, it's much easier to drive or to or take the bus. As I said before, you can do things such as read on train, so it's good for long journeys. When was the last time you traveled by train? Uh, it, it's uh, I'm not quite sure. Let me think. It was a while ago now. I think the last time was last year when I went up to see some friends that I, I had not seen for a while in the north of the country. Yes, that was it. It was a journey of about three hours and I had to change the trains once during the journey. The first train was a bit crowded and noisy as I think there were people on there going to a football match, but it was okay trip most of the way. Okay. Good. So tell me, what do you think about these answers? Um, which which of these three answers do you like the most and what do you like about it? I like the third an answer, actually. Uh, I couldn't give it quite properly. Like, I couldn't explain uh, why I when was the last time I traveled by train and why I liked it. So here it is explained more vastly and it talks about the journey more so yeah okay yeah definitely so one the things i like about this um, this third part myself is that um he uses a he or she uses a variety of sentence structure right so the first sentence is quite short it says it was a while ago now so i'm ignoring the i'm not quite sure let me think about it. So it was a while ago now and then they talk about i think the last time was last year when I went up to see some friends I had not seen for a while in the North of country. This is a longer sentence. So they're varying the length of their sentences, which, which makes their answer less boring and more interesting, right? So let me see if Asan answered the question. Asan, I give questions for you in the private chat. I would like you to answer those questions um, and type it out so that I can at least see your grammar and lexical resource. Okay. So, I, I actually had six questions ready. So if either you'll get one more try. And um, I personally think you are doing quite well. You just need a little more practice to work on your nervousness. You need a little better um, vocab. And you need to work on your transition words as you keep saying the word and a lot. Same for Arik. OK, so Arik, are you here? Yes, still here. This next part is for, for you. Anna, next slide. I I have two more questions for you, as in two more slides for Arik and one more slide for Philip. Okay. So, question for Arik. Where is your hometown? My hometown is in Feni, which is quite close to the district of Chiragong, as most people do not know where Feni is. It is on the southern part, as I believe, of uh, Bangladesh, and I do like to go there most often. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, that was uh, an okay land. So you could have used a little more adverbs. You could have described the journey a bit more. So try to give sorts of answers that will help you um, use show your vocab more. So if you talked about how your um, hometown is, you could talk about it's a really pleasant place. You could talk about how beautiful the scenery is. So then you will be able to use more descriptive words, use better, a lot of vocabulary that will show how um, your good English to the examiner, right? So next sentence. Is there much to do in your hometown?
All right. Is there much to do in your hometown? Um, or you can make yourself, please. Okay, Arik might be having some problems with his mic. Yeah, he's having internet problems. That's fine. Let us know in the chat when you um when your problems are better. Then we can help you. Okay, so for now, let's skip this. Uh, let's go to practice questions five, and then we'll um continue. So let's, we'll we'll continue when Arik is back. How about the let's go to practice question five? Ah no, go to practice question five as in next to next slide. Yep. That put the Okay. So we'll fight them. <laughs> back to you again. This is the last question for you, um, provided Ari can get back. Okay. So what kind of books do you like to read? Well, I don't uh, like to read much. Uh, I just read a specific type of books mainly. But I read romantic books and fantasies mostly. I like this type of genre. Okay. So you could have added to this a little by giving an example of a book that you like. But that's fine. So next question. Uh, do you read the same kind of books now that you read when you were a child? Um, well, uh, no, because when I, were, I was a child, I used to like fairy stories like Cinderella, Snow White, these type of stories. I used to read them a lot. But now as I am becoming an, I'm an adult now, I like mostly mostly the stories which are real life related or mostly the stories which show us more reality content. These type of stories I like mostly right now. Okay. Oops, sorry, sorry. Okay, that was good. You gave examples of what you used to like, what's examples of what you like, not you didn't name any books, but you did give examples of the type you used to like and the type that you like now. That's okay, that's good. Um, last question when do you think is the best time to read i think for me it will be in the afternoon or in the night when all my family members are sleeping i get out my own time i have my little own space so i can enjoy my own time by reading the books and maybe drinking a cup of coffee so yeah i think afternoon or night is the best time to read books Okay, so this was definitely more organized than your other answers. So you talked about what what time you like to read. Then you talked about it with a mug of coffee. That was a good example. That was a good visualization. That was great. So I will we'll look at the sample answers, and then after that, I want you to do some self evaluation for yourself with my help. So I'll ask you some questions about your own English, and then we're going to reflect on how you feel you could improve your English. So okay. next slide, let's look at the sample answers for this. Okay, what kind of books do you like to read? So the father talked about how she likes um, fantasy books and romance books. So you could have also talked about why you like those books so, or what other kind of books you like, right? So let's see the example here. I mostly like to read biographies. I'm not sure why, but it's interesting to read about pe people's real lives, especially when they have had interesting lives and have had to deal with many problems. So biographies are books about people's lives. So maybe if there's a, it's usually written about famous people or celebrities, so it talks about their life from beginning to end. So it's from a third person point of view. Okay, so this person talks about yeah, how they find biographies interesting and how they like reading about people's real lives when they have had interesting lives and have had to deal with many problems. I do read fiction as well, but I often find it difficult to get hold, hold of a book that I really like. I also like reading about books to do with current affairs. So 
how would Faida could have structured her um, answer would have been, I mostly like to read fantasy novels. I find it interesting to read about um, new worlds and if I feel like it helps improve my imagination and creativity. I also read romance novels, but I often find it difficult to get a hold of a book that I really like. Something like that, right? So that, and the last sentence of this answer is, I also like reading about books to do with current affairs. So they give three examples. So what you could have done is you could have talked about the type of book, then a reason, then the other type of book, then a reason. So why? Because if you just said, I like reading fantasy and romance, that doesn't give the examiner much content to mark you on, right? It's just one, one sentence. So it, when grammar is, when they have to see if you have used a variety of sentence structure, what will they do, right? Something like that. So yeah, so if you give um, more examples, if you use, and also if you talk, give reasons, it gives you uh, more scope to show off your voc vocabulary, show off your grammar, right? So second question, do you read the same kind of books now that you read when you were a child? The answer here is not really, no. Actually, I didn't read that much when I was a child, but if I did, it was mainly fiction books. So just fairy tales, things like The Lion, The Witch, and The Wardrobe, fantasy things. Okay, so they gave a lot of examples here. Okay, so The Lion, The Witch, and The Wardrobe is one book. It's um one of the books from Narnia. So they gave an example here and they talked about what they used to like, okay. When do you think it is the best time to read? I think any time is okay, but when I read, I like to concentrate so I can't read for a short time, like on a bus ride, like some people do. I like to put time aside to enjoy it. So if I have some free time at the weekend, I might read for a few hours, and I nearly always read before I go to bed. This really helps me to sleep. So this is a different approach from Rufayda's answer. Rufayda's answer was about, I like to, um read at night when other people are asleep so she can read in, pri in private in um, comfortable silence. She also talked about how she likes to read in the afternoon with a cup of coffee, with a mug of coffee. So that's also a great visualization. This person talked about um, when they feel like reading. They, can, they want to read when they can concentrate. So they can't read on bus rides. And they also talked about how they read before they go to bed. So they read at night which really helps them to sleep. So both are different approaches, but both are um, correct answers. This one has um, a variety of sentence structures. So why this one actually focuses a bit more on simple sentences. Actually, what she often does is just string together different ideas using and, but she has a really good basis. She has a really good um, understanding of English questions, and she can easily grasp what to say, right? So. Even she is hesitating a little because she has some uh, nervousness right now, but you can see that she is getting better. So, Rufayat, um, let's mar mark you as for today. So, just so you know, we will have mocks uh, near the end of this course, so you will be able to improve then. Isan, you took like so long to write those answers. <laughs> okay, I will. Uh, do that. You took a lot of time. You can't usually take that much time. But I will um, assess that. Let's finish what we started right now. So, Rufat, I'm going to ask you some questions about your fluency and coherence. So, how smoothly can you speak? Do you talk continuously rather than having to pause constantly to find words? Or does it take a lot of effort to explain yourself? So, do you feel like you talk continuously or do you have to pause constantly to find words? I can't talk continuously. Be I. I find difficulty to make a conversation for a long time. Like I can say a few sentences, but then I pause, pause, and pause. I, yeah. I use mainly simple sentences, which is my main problem that you said, that I can use complex sentence or compound sentence, and my vocabulary is not very good. OK. This hopefully will get better with practice and as we look at sample answers. But um, the thing you said about how at first you can talk continuously and then you have to pause. That's something I noticed too, right? So first you say something that's really relevant to the question. You st the first uh, sentence or first two sentences you say is done pretty well. And then you get lost. Like um, now then you're scrambling for things to say. Yeah. That's completely fine. So what you can do here, 
like to speak at length, this will affect you a lot in part two because in part two you have to talk for two minutes straight. So it's an entire speech. So for part one, you don't have to worry so much. If you feel like you're scrambling for answers, stop because your first two sentences are nice, they're fluent. It's the point of extending your question is to show show how fluent you are, show off your grammar and vocab. But if you feel like extending your answer will just make it worse for you, you'll end up um, struggling a lot, you'll end up making a lot of pauses, then don't do that. That's completely fine. With practice, as you speak into the mirror, as you speak to a friend in English, you'll um, start to get better. So for your fluency and coherence, I would say you are pretty good. But at the level you are right now, I would give you um, a six or a seven. I feel like you could, because of those um, sentences where you seemed confused and near the end where you um, paused a lot, seemed to be looking for the word, seemed to be looking for what to say. But um, you're, you are doing pretty well. Don't give up. I feel like you can do very good. So I will tell you what fluency and coherence band set. Six is. So the band six descriptor for fluency and coherence is is willing to speak and at length, though may lose coherence at times due to occasional repetition, self-correction, or hesitation. Uses a range of connectives and discourse markers, but not always appropriately. So you do do the first thing. You try you are willing to speak at length, you do want to extend your answers, but then you you occasionally start to repeat yourself. And the second part is using a range of connectives, you are not really doing this. So um you are you only using one connective, which is and. So if I took, I would say, like according to the band descriptor for fluency coherence, so would at the moment you would be at around a five point five. So let's go to, or a five. So let's go to the next part of the question. So vocabulary. Do you have a wide range of variety of vocabulary? Are the words you use appropriate and in correct form? Can you use vocabulary to get your ex exact meaning a lot across? If you can think of one word, can you quick, easily and quickly adapt and find another word? So do you have a good range of vocabulary? And if you can think of one word, can you quickly think of a synonym or think of another word to replace that word? Rufaida, do you feel like you have a wide range of vocabulary? No, I don't have a wide range of vocabulary. Actually, I have a like, problem with that i can't remember words easily that you say that we can use a synonym if we can't remember a word at that time but i don't remember synonyms also so yeah, yeah that's completely fine so learning synonyms is a little hard because you have to learn them in the proper context right so it will take some time but one I feel like your words, the, the words that you use, even though you use some si mostly simple words, they're all appropriate. So it's not like you learned a few hard words and then you're using it inappropriately. They're all appropriate and correct you. So that's great. So uh, while you do have, don't really have a wide range of vocabulary, it's a little hard for you find, to find synonyms. The words that you do have, you do use them appropriate. So that's eh, great. Okay, so just the last two criteria. Hmm? So about vocabulary, I think you could do a lot better in this case. So I would say um, overall, you could do much better. So for lexical resource, now band five, I'll read out what it means. Um, manages to talk about familiar and unfamiliar topics, but uses vocabulary with limited flexibility. Attempts to use paraphrase, but with mix, mixed success. So the first part is manages to talk about familiar and unfamiliar topics. So you one thing I noticed that you can answer questions very well. Like you can instantly grasp what the question is asking and then answer the question for most cases. In some cases, you struggled a little, but in many other cases, you answered the question instantly. Like when you say, what, when do you think is the best time to read? You answered that very well and you gave good examples. You gave good visualizations such as the cup of coffee example. So I would say you can talk about... Um, Mm, can't talk very well, but mm, you um, don't really have that wide range of vocabulary. So there really isn't um, much of a point at saying the band score here because this is just part one. So we're just going to, um, let's not do band scores anymore. We'll just talk about what you could improve on. So you could definitely improve on your vocabulary. So for gra grammar and then pronunciation. 
grammar do you use a variety of grammatical structures do you use complex sentences okay so we have already discussed this you need to work a bit more on using a variety of sentence structures you mainly use simple sentences and then you keep using the word and to join those simple sentences together break down your sentences and don't use the word and too much for speaking with correct grammar if there are mistakes to interfere with speaking you speak with correct grammar pronunciation is your pronunciation clear or does the examiner have to strain and work hard to understand you your pronunciation so far you've been using simple words so i can't judge if you would be good at pronouncing a little more difficult words but so far your pronunciation has been pretty good you were clear you spoke pretty smoothly so i would say you're you're doing pretty well in terms of pronunciation okay so and your accent don't worry about accent that's who that shows who you are you've been speaking clearly so next class i will send you some videos about pronunciation so that if you do are, if you are struggling with any words you can fix those okay have you used word stress sentence stress and intonation properly i notice your word stress um they're pretty fine but about sentence stress um you don't really um stress the important words sentences but you like at sometimes you're doing using stress very well sometimes you get a little stuck it's completely fine the first very first question you answered and that answer wasn't very well organized so you were like um hsc exam have hsc exam have na government ki decide korbe so that was like um, not very fluent it was very confusing it had very poor grammar but with time with um, you are st starting to gain more confidence so hopefully you're going to do much better in the future okay so if you could continue with r a okay also get to what was um a son's question i can't really think fast enough what i mean with that is okay okay so when you're thinking vocab uh, will come naturally to you don't start use your thinking time to think of um oh i will use this word oh i will use that word there's no need to think about that the thinking time is mainly about the content right so you have to become familiar with these contents i gave you a list of common topics that could come in part 1 work study um home family so you think about those like what do i like or dislike i'm a you question about food and education school what can i say so if you have an idea of the content of the points you want to address then hopefully you won't get blank and also ha amar eta hoto prothome ami ekta simple question use korto acha what is your favorite food i'm blank i don't know what to say so my the jam chef food ashtam ote bolto like the first thing i get i'll just talk about that that's um to define what your practice er sathe aste aste thik has you become it actually needs a lot of confidence ye at feeling relaxed so if you feel um if you don't feel comfortable if you don't feel relaxed or confident in the exam environment even if you know the answer your mind will get blank so for confidence i've seen doing a lot of practice doing a lot of mocks and seeing lots of samples does help because then i have an idea of how to structure it so hopefully asan next time when you um, come with your mic then i can see um i can i can't really answer your question or really help you improve unless i can hear you and see which parts you need improvement on so let's hopefully we can work on this better in you know, in class and don't worry about your mind becoming blank it happens to everyone that's what what the class is for to help you gain the confidence to help you understand how what kind of answers you need to give how you can structure your answers okay so i if you uh yeah acha <laughs> so arik since you are intern we can do this later so uh, it's been a pretty long class thank you so much for joining this first class and with very few people may hopefully next time there will be more people so we can make this more interest in interactive make this more fun so do let me know how you liked today's class so today i could focus most on rufaida because she had um a working internet working microphone so just um let me know how you like the class so far how if there's anything you would have um wanted differently and um i hope you enjoyed the class okay so for next class we'll do part 2 and part 3 
um, after we are done covering part two and part three, we, um, if we have time, we will come back to part one and talk, talk to Ehsan and see if there's an, um, like Ehsan and the other new students, if they do end up joining, and then hopefully we can work on this a little more. Okay, so for part two and part three, you don't really need any kind of preparation. We, I do plan on focusing a lot on practice. So it's please try to attend. Please try to come with working microphone. If your Wi-Fi is weak, please try to come with um, mobile data so you can use hotspot. And for now, just relax. Don't worry too much about it. You guys are doing great. Ari and Mufada, I heard you speak. You are doing um, very well. Esan, I saw your answers. You, I love your use of vocabulary. I love how you use the word saturated. You could, it just, um, you could work a little more on, um, swearing sentence structure, and you could work a little more on your, um, w using the words in context, right? So you said full and saturated. There's no need to use both of those in the sentence. And okay, I like your answer to the second question very, very much. So you talked about your mother cooking at home, and then you talked about a little more of a story. That's good. Um, you use 